presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweeten. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. These cold weather days, families really warm up to hearty, sustaining energy foods. So be sure to serve them breakfast toast, dinner rolls, muffins, and bread with delicious, nourishing parquet margarine. It's one of the very best energy foods you can serve, and so economical, too. Yes, parquet margarine costs very little, yet it helps provide the food elements that are so important for winter's nutritional needs. In addition to its high energy value, parquet margarine contains essential vitamin A, 9,000 units in every single pound, and that's just as true in winter as it is in summer. Each pound of parquet you buy all through the year has 9,000 units of vitamin A added to it. So for a grand flavor treat and for energy and vitamin A, buy and serve Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes Parquet. join the great Gildersleeve, who still has a breach of promise suit dangling over his head. In addition, he's just sent off a check to the Department of Internal Revenue, so he's feeling doubly depressed. We find him now sitting glumly in his parlor, chewing a cigar as Bertie enters. <laughs> Lunch nearly ready, Bertie? Yes, sir. I just thought I'd straighten up the living room a little. Oh, well, don't pick up those comic books, Bertie. Just leave them on the floor. They've been there all morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know. Leroy skipped out early. But if you don't leave them for him to pick up, how is he ever going to learn? I've been trying that system for quite a while now, but he don't seem to catch on. Yeah, well, I'll speak to him when he comes in. Just leave everything as is. The skates, too? Skates, too. I don't understand that boy. He seems to have the instincts of a pig. He's just a boy, Mr. Gilsey. You've got to expect him to act like a pig for a few more years. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of his little friends, too. Tell him to go away, Bertie. Yes, I'll get rid of him. Leroy in... Oh, excuse me, Judge. Morning, Bertie. Gildersleeve in? Yes, he is, Judge, but he's feeling kind of mean. Well, I gotta see him anyway. Morning, Throckmorton. Hello, Judge. Take off your coat. Have a chair. Thank you. Well, have you done anything? Well, yes and no. I did a little reading up on breach of promise last night. Oh, well, that's nice. Did you find out anything? Well, I found one thing, but the... A dirty guy! <laughs> you dirty guy! Leroy, what's the matter? Oh, he's got a bloody nose. That's what's the matter. He's a dirty guy! You got a handkerchief, Judge? You got one? Come here, Leroy. Wipe your nose. Oh, God, dirty guy. Try not to dribble on the rug, my boy. <laughs> okay. Now, I've told you not to get into fights, young man. Who beat you up? Nobody. It was a try. What were you fighting about? About you. About me? Well, I appreciate your loyalty, my boy, but I can fight my own battles. You weren't there. I had to do it. Oh? Huh? <laughs> Explain yourself, please. Who are you fighting with? Whitey White. The dentist boy. Oh, yes. What was the exact cause of the quarrel? He said you were an old chicken chaser. <laughs> oh, he did, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and how'd you like a punch in the nose, you old goat? <laughs> Sorry, Gildy. Proceed with the case. Yes, yes. Leroy, I deplore fighting, as you know. Still, in this instance, I think you had good grounds. I've never gone out of my way to seek the society of any woman. I have never been involved with any woman, and I don't intend to be. What a character. I don't care for that expression, either. Now, pick up your comic books and skates. Okay. And not now. I'm busy. Okay. Can I have a sandwich? No. Spoil your lunch. Okay. Uh... Here's your handkerchief, Unc. You may keep it, Leroy. Better go upstairs and wash your face a little bit. Lunch will be ready soon. Okay. Gosh, I don't see why I have to start to death around here. Yes. Fine boy, Throckmorton. Why don't you let the little fella have a sandwich? When I want advice on raising the little fellow from you, I'll ask for it, Judge, and pay for it. Let's stick to the law. Well, now there's one thing, Gildy. I'm convinced that if we had any kind of a defense, Del Rey's lawyer would drop the case in a minute. Well, tell him we're going to fight. You drop it. Oh, no, no. He'll think we're bluffing. 
He won't give up unless I can show him we have a case. All right, dig up a case. Well, I found one sort of a defense, only we can't use it. Huh? If you could prove that at the time you allegedly proposed marriage to Dolores Del Rey, you were engaged to another woman... What do you mean? Well, if you were pledged to another and Miss Del Rey knew it, she has no case. By George. Uh, Horace, hmm? did I ever tell you that Eve Goodwin and I were engaged to be married? Of course, you told everybody. Did I ever tell you we'd broken off our engagement? Well, no, but I understood. Never mind what you understood. Eve Goodwin and I are engaged. We always have been and we always will be. Gildy, I don't like the sound of this. The law is a stern mistress and I... Now, don't go dragging ethics into this, Judge. The lady is a blackmailer, isn't she? Well, yes, if your side of the story is true. Don't you believe anything your client says? Now, Throckmorton. Well, if you do, you get that downtown and tell Del Rey's lawyer that you've got a defense. And you're going to fight. But, Gildy, you'd have to be able to prove this. You'd have to have witnesses. For the last time, Judge, I am engaged to Eve Goodwin. Just leave the rest to me. All right, Gildy, I'll see what I can do. But let me ask just one thing. Does Eve know about this? Don't worry about Eve. Have you children finished your lunch? I want to talk to you. I'm all done. Marge didn't eat a thing. She's thinking about her boyfriend. She just wants to live on nothing but love. That'll do, Leroy. Love! Oh, shut up. Marjorie, where are you going? I don't care to sit here and be insulted by a drip. She wants to go someplace and let a drip make love to her. Leroy, Marjorie, wait a minute. I want to talk to you both about something important. Is it about being neat, picking up stuff? No, but have you... I'll do it right after lunch. More tapioca, Mr. Gilsey? No, thank you, Bertie. Uh, Bertie, uh, perhaps you'd better stay and listen to what I have to say to the children. Yes, sir. More tapioca, Leroy? No, thanks. Uh, shoot, Uncle, I gotta get going. So do I. All right. Now, uh, as you all know, I'm engaged to marry Miss Goodwin. What? Oh, my goodness. What did you say, Uncle Mort? I simply made a reference to my fiancé. Mr. Gilsley, you sure is a hard man to keep track of. <laughs> Let's not be silly about this. I told all of you last spring that I was engaged to Miss Eve Goodwin. Yes, sir, but it seems we ain't seen much of her recently. I thought she gave you the air. Nothing of the kind, Leroy. She's very devoted to me. As I am to her. Love! Leroy! Just kidding, Uncle. Yeah, well, cut it out. I want all of you to understand that I'm still engaged to Miss Goodwin. That I've been engaged to her all the time. Well, I don't know how it happened, but I think it's wonderful, Uncle. I hope you'll be very happy. Huh? When are you going to get married? Oh, it's nothing like that. I mean, nothing immediate. This is too deep for me, Mr. Kilsley. Same here. Is you is or is you ain't engaged to Miss Goodwin? I am. If anybody should ask you, Leroy, you tell him so. I'll answer, Miss Gilsey. Gilsey, President. Oh, yes, Judge, just a minute. Judge. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Hello, Judge. Uh, well, no, I haven't had a chance to see her yet. Well, I was going to do it just as soon. Oh, my goodness. You're right. I better do it before anybody else gets to her. Where's my hat? Holy smoke, what's the rush? Got to see my fiancée right away. What for? Got to tell her something. I mean, ask her something. Pick up those skates, Leroy, before I get back here. Phew. Old wind isn't what it used to be. Oh, Throckmorton, it's you. Uh, hello, Eve. Can I, uh, can I come in for a moment? Oh, of course. Uh, 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 thanks. Well, what is it, Throckmorton? Is something wrong? No, I, uh, I just dropped in to pass the time of day. Oh, you seem in a dreadful hurry. Won't you take your coat off? Uh, I think I'll uh, uh, just uh, sit down a moment and uh, get my breath back first. Oh, yes, for goodness sake. Uh, nice day we're having. Yes, it is. Lovely. Uh, it was cloudy at first, but then uh, cleared up. <laughs> yes, it's so good to see the sun again. Uh, it could still get cloudy again, but I don't think it will. Uh, I hope not. Eve? Yes, Doc Morton? Nothing. 
<laughs> well, do take your overcoat off, Throckmorton. It might help you to breathe. Uh, unbutton your collar, too, if you like. Uh, no, I'm all right. I, I'll just sit here a minute. <laughs> uh, that new picture you got there over on the mantel? Oh, no. No, that picture's been there all the time. Uh, thought maybe it was new. Looks purpler. <laughs> Eve. Yes? <sighs> Nothing. There's something on your mind, Throckmorton. No, no, really. I can tell. Come on, what is it? Uh, honest, Eve, I just happened to be passing by, and I thought, well... I'll just drop in and see Eve a minute. Well, I'm glad you did. But uh, I have a parent-teacher's meeting very shortly, so if you have anything to tell me... Well, uh, you won't get sore. <laughs> Throckmorton, you're such a child. This seems just like old times. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, those were the days. Hey, Eve, uh, what do you say we get engaged again? Are you serious? Serious? This is a matter of life and death. <laughs> I thought it was sudden the first time. But this... It, somebody at the door. Uh, yes, a friend is calling for me. I've got to go. No, wait. Wait, Eve. Uh, but my meeting, Throckmorton... Let her wait a second. Look, we could pretend our engagement has never been broken. We could pretend we've been engaged all the time. We just put off the wedding, that's all. Why not? Well, I can think of several reasons, but uh, one of them is that I have to go now. Oh, darn the Parent-Teacher Association. Wait. Throckmorton, please. Eve, this is mighty important. You don't understand. We wouldn't have to get married or anything. We wouldn't even be engaged, really. Well, what would be the point? Yeah, well, I'll explain later. Uh, will you do it? Will you, Eve? We'd only be pretending. How about it? I'm sorry, Throckmorton. That would be living a lie. Come in. Oh, nuts. Do you mind if I use your telephone, then? Not at all. Oh, Evie, darling, come along. We'll have to hurry if we're going to get to Coots Mill before sundown. <laughs> Be right there, just as soon as I get my things on. Oh, parent-teacher's meeting, eh? It happens that he's a parent and I'm a teacher. <laughs> Talk about living a lie. Hello, Judge. Gildersleeve. Hold everything, Judge. It didn't work. Rockmorton, really? Don't ask me what happened, Judge. I got mixed up with a Parent Teachers Association. Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. When rosy cheeked youngsters get to playing outdoors these wintry days, they work up enormous appetites. And a good way to satisfy this healthy hunger is to spread slices of enriched bread, crackers, or hot toast with delicious parquet margarine. Children simply love parquet because it tastes so good. Adds such appetizing flavor goodness to bread, muffins, pancakes, and waffles. And it's extra good for them, too, because parquet helps provide energy fuel and an important vitamin that growing children need. In addition to being so high in energy value, parquet contains vitamin A. In fact, Kraft adds 9,000 units of important vitamin A to every single pound of this nutritious spread for America's bread. So please, the children, delight your whole family. Buy and serve delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. Now let's get back to our friend Gildersleeve. His refusal by Eve Goodwin has left him only one course to pursue. Before pursuing it, however, he comes home to take in a little nourishment. Now, after supper, he calls in Leroy, Marjorie, and Bertie once more. Uh, uh, I uh, didn't think I'd have to call another family conference so soon, children, uh, Bertie. But, uh, well, uh, something has come up that makes it necessary. Uh, I thought I told you to clean up the living room, Leroy. Those comic books? I'm reading them. What about the skates? You been skating in here? No, sir. Well, kindly remove all this junk at once. Yes, sir. Not now. Wait till I've finished. Yes, sir. Uh, in discussing my fiancée this afternoon, I, uh, made one slight mistake. It's not Eve Goodwin I'm engaged to, it's Mrs. Ransom. <laughs> oh, Anki! And he's the guy I got a bloody nose for. <laughs> What's going on anyway, Unc? There's nothing going on. Don't you remember that I was engaged to Mrs. Ransom some time ago? But that was ages ago. She's run through a whole husband since then. <laughs> It'll not be necessary to mention all the ins and outs of this affair, Bertie. Suffice it to say that Mrs. Ransom and I have been engaged for a long, long time. 
And we are now engaged. But this afternoon you were positive you were engaged to Miss Goodwin. Well, that was a slip of the tongue. If I said Eve Goodwin, I meant Leela Ransom, that's all. Ye gods, can't anybody make a mistake? Uncle Mort, has this anything to do with all that lawsuit and everything, Miss Del Rey? What makes you ask that, my dear? I smell a rat, that's all. So do I. Why don't you come clean, Unc, and then we'll play ball with you? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Unky. We're not dopes. There's something fishy about this. You better tell us or we might mess it up for you. Uh, well, uh, what it comes down to is this. If I was engaged to somebody else at the time I was supposed to have asked Miss Del Rey to marry me, she has no case. Hey, pretty foxy. Yeah, there's nothing foxy about it. <laughs> it's a perfectly legitimate arrangement, Leroy. Naturally, I thought first of basing my case on... Well, on my most recent fiancé, Miss Goodwin. But, uh, for some reason she refused to be a party to it. Now, ain't that strange? I would have thought she'd snap at you, Miss Gilsey. She did. She almost bit my head off, Bertie. <laughs> anyway, I've decided to base my case on Mrs. Ransom. Have you spoken to her yet, Unky? No, but there won't be any trouble there. You better be careful. What if she should turn you down? Well, I thought I'd go over and see her this evening. Maybe I ought to take a few precautions, though. Don't take her no precautions, Mr. Gilsey. Take her presents. Yeah. Bertie's right, Unky. Flowers or candy or something. Oh, maybe some of the chocolates she used to like. Women are sentimental, I guess. Oh, darling, I've missed you so. <laughs> Leroy, I think you've taken enough chances for today. Now shut up. <laughs> yes, sir. How about a ring, Uncle Moore? A ring? Oh, yes, I mustn't forget the ring. I've still got it, too, upstairs with my cufflinks. Oh, and another thing. I wonder... Can't tell how women are going to react. What is it? Well, <laughs> the first time I ever called on her, I wore my air raid helmet. Maybe if I wore it again, by George, I will. She's always remembered that. Bertie, where is my helmet? Do you know? No, I don't, Miss Gilsey. I remember Marge grew some ivy in it once. That was a long time ago. You were keeping guppies in it for a while. Guppies? <laughs> Leroy, that helmet is government property. Well, if you weren't using it... I might have needed it any moment. You find that helmet, Leroy, you'll need a helmet in a certain place. It wouldn't fit there. Get the helmet. I, uh... I, I think I know where it is, Uncle. I'm sure I can find it. Yes, yes. Well, what do you think, Marjorie, with the ring and the candy and the helmet? You'll do all right, Uncle Mort, if you'll be nice. Oh, I'll be diplomatic. You're the man who can do it. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Here's your helmet, Uncle. Yeah. Is it clean, Leroy? Sure, it's clean. Gosh, guppies are just about the cleanest fish there is. Yeah. Well, hello, Mr. Gillespie. Uh, hi, Peavy. What can I do for... My goodness, what's that you got there? Oh, <laughs> that's my air raid helmet. I thought it looked like an air raid helmet. Are you expecting a little incident this evening? <laughs> no, no, I just happen to have it with me. Say, uh... uh going to a drill of some kind, I presume. No, I'm not going to any drill. Say, Peavy, if you uh, got... loaning it to a friend, no doubt. I just happen to have it with me. That's a wise precaution. Probably won't happen, but then again, who can tell? <laughs> Stitch in time saves nine. What won't happen? Or, as the pharmacist would put it, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah, Peavy, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's in the paper there, didn't you read it? They say we're likely to have these rocket bombs dropping in on us in any minute. Oh, that. As soon as Mrs. Peavy heard that, she decided we ought to move. And we asked ourselves where we'd go, so we're staying where we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the only thing to do, I guess. Well, we listened to Raymond Graham swing that evening, and we felt better. Do you listen to him, Mr. Gillespie? Well, when I'm at home, I do, whenever I remember it. Well, as a rule, Mrs. Peavy retires around 8.30, but I, I usually set up for the final word from Mr. Swing. He had an interesting analysis there last night. Did you happen to hear him? No, I didn't. I was out. Well, he viewed some things with alarm, but on the other hand, he found some grounds for hope, too. Sensible man, Mr. Swing. He doesn't lose his head. Um, what can I do for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? Well, confound it, you've talked so much, I've forgotten what I came in here for. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I'm a little wound up today. Yes, I remember. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. You got any of those chocolates you used to have with a cherry in the center? You know, they came in a little box. Oh, you mean the ones you used to buy for Mrs. Ransom? Well, since you mentioned it, yes. They were her favorites. Mm, the box had a red ribbon on it and a picture of some cherries and a robin redbreast. Yeah, that's it. And some little tin sugar tongs to pick the candies out with. Yeah, that's it. Have you got any of those? No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't had any of those in two years. Yeah, well, what have you got? Well, my selection of candies is a little limited just now. Hard to get chocolate, you know. We have these candy bars. Is that all? That's all. It's called the Doodad Junior. Sells for five cents. The Doodad Senior is larger. Sells, sells for, for ten. Yeah. But I haven't got any of those. Mm-hmm. Doodad Junior. What, what kind of candy is that to give a lady? It's guaranteed harmless. Yes. Well, that's all you got. Give me a half a dozen of those. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can only allow one to a customer. What? One doodad? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's in the interest of national defense. Yep, all right. There you are. Wrap it up? No, I'll take it the way it is, in the interest of national defense. <laughs> Goodbye, Peavy. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. I hope she enjoys it. It's one measly little peanut bar. Doodad. A man's got to be a regular Casanova to get anywhere these days. <laughs> Guppies. Phew. Smells like a low tide. <laughs> oh, well. Anything for a joke. He, either this chin strap has shrunk or I've expanded. Gracious! Warden Gildersleeve at your service. Like to inspect your sand buckets, ma'am. Oh, don't tell me there's an air raid. Quick! Pull down your shades and turn out the lights. Rock, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Leela, just a little private alert. Well, I don't think it's very nice you coming over here in your helmet and all scanner, girl. Well, I thought you'd think it was cute. Oh, silly, I'm only teasing. What's this all about? Nothing. Hey, uh, brought you something. Oh? There, for you. For me? Why, Throckmorton, it's... Oh, it's peanuts. Don't you like peanuts? Down where I come from, they feed them to hogs. <laughs> hogs, eh, well... I tried to get chocolate. Oh, that's all right. It isn't the gift anyway. It's the thought behind it. Yeah, that's right. It's the thought behind it. What was the thought behind it, Throckmorton? <laughs> huh? Never mind. Do take off your helmet before it strangles in and it on you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, you know, Leela, I, I've been thinking. Have you, Throckmorton? Yeah, I've been thinking. Do you remember New Year's Eve when you were saying about how we used to be engaged and what fun we had and all that? Those were the days. Hey, Leela. Did I say that? Sure you did. You were talking about the first time you ever met me. It was during a blackout. I came over here with my air raid helmet and my flashlight, and you took a shine to me right off. Remember? It's funny. New Year's Eve is just a blur to me now. There's only one thing I remember very distinctly. Oh, what's that? When that man handed you a summons for breach of promise. Uh, now, Leela, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about that. The whole thing was a mistake. Yours or hers? Uh, there was nothing in it, really. Nothing. It's all been settled. That, that is practically. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'd hate to think of a man I'd once been engaged to being mixed up in any nasty old lawsuit. I don't know what I'd say to people. Uh, Leela? Yes? Nothing. Uh, say, uh, how would you like it if I was to sing for you, huh? Speak to me of love. Oh, Throckmorton. I'll sing and you play the piano. Not right now. I'm really not in the mood. Not in the mood? No, no. Uh, let's just sit here and talk, shall we? Leela, what's happened? <sighs> I don't know, Throckmorton. It's just life, I guess. Or maybe I'm growing up or something. But I've been thinking, too. You? I know. You think I'm just a silly little thing without a thought in a pretty head. But you're wrong. Well, oh, I never said that, Leela. Gosh, you have some wonderful thoughts. But... No, no, that's not true either. But there's one thing I've decided. It's about life. What's that? I've decided that love isn't everything. You know, it's funny you saying that. Because I've just about decided the same thing. Have you, Throckmorton? You're darn right. Love can be a great big nuisance. I read in a book once that lovers can never be true friends. Do you believe that, Throckmorton? Oh, absolutely. 
Uh, let's always be friends, Leela. I've always been a friend of yours. Do you mean that? Of course I do. Are you a friend of mine right now? Of course I am. Leela, would you do a friend a favor if he asked you? You know I would. Would you be engaged to me again? Engaged? But you just said that... Uh, oh, don't worry. There won't be any love in it or anything like that. Uh, we wouldn't even get married or anything. Just be a friendly understanding. Just a friendly understanding. Yeah. I'd give you back your ring, and we'd just pretend that our engagement had never been broken. Simple? Uh, yes, but how long would this friendly understanding have to last? Uh, well, till this lawsuit blows over. Uh... Now, don't be offended. You mean to tell me... That... I didn't mean to tell you, but uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> uh, now, now, now Leela, don't be offended, please. I'm not offended. You're not? Oh, will you do it then, as a favor to a friend? I wouldn't be a very good friend if I refused, would I? <laughs> well, Leela, you're true blue, by George. Yeah, some people do you a favor, and they tell you they have to go to a parent-teacher meeting. Now, don't go away. I got a ring right here in my pocket somewhere. The ring. Uh, there. Other finger, Throckmorton. Oh. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This doesn't mean anything, you know. I understand. And you don't mind? Why should I? After all, it's just a friendly understanding. Women are funny. Just the same, I can't help thinking of the first time you put this ring on my finger. And you were so darling then. What do you mean, I was darling then? And after you put the ring on my finger, you kissed it. And then you kissed my hand, and then my arm, and then my shoulder. <laughs> you were so impetuous in those days. I still am. <laughs> Throck, Martin, let go. Oh, Leela, just a little kiss. No. Come on, just one. Hey, where are you going? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave now, Throck, Martin. Leela, don't get sore. Just a little kiss. We had a friendly understanding, Throck, Martin, but that was not part of it. Here's your overcoat. Uh, Leela, if we're supposed to be engaged, we have to keep up appearances, you know. You may kiss me in public, Throck, Martin, but not in private. What? Oh, no, Leela. You've forgotten about our engagement. It means nothing, remember? Absolutely nothing. Uh, that's the trouble with women. They're so literal-minded. You forgot your hat. Oh! Gee. Gosh, if anybody saw us now, they'd think we were married. Uh, we had a very satisfactory interview. She went for it, huh? We had a satisfactory interview. I guess she kind of liked the idea, huh? She threw me out of the house. Now go to bed. What a character. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, inviting you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Remember, there are delicious prepared mustards, too, in Kraft's famous line of quality foods. For more zestful enjoyment of salads, sandwich meats, hot-cooked vegetables, and deviled eggs, add the delightful flavor tang of Kraft Salad Mustard. This tangy, golden Kraft Salad Mustard is spiced just right for most everyone's taste, blends smoothly into cooked dishes, adds lip-smacking flavor to gravies and barbecue sauce. Your family and guests are sure to like Kraft Salad Mustard. It's so appetizing in so many tempting ways. You'll want to try this other delicious variety, too. Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added. It's just a bit sharper and oh so tasty when added to a sauce for shrimp or spread on cold meat cuts. Buy both of these grand flavor treats, nippy Kraft horseradish mustard and tangy golden Kraft salad mustard. Tomorrow, ask for Kraft quality mustard.
This is the National Broadcast.